On December 26th, 1944, Soviet troops reached the River Danube from the west, encircling the city of Budapest. 86,200 German and Hungarian soldiers, along with 800,000 civilians, were trapped inside. Over the next 48 days, the capital city of Hungary would bear witness to some of the most vicious street fighting of the entire Second World War, the Siege of Budapest had begun. Having encircled the city, the Soviets were in a strong position, but were now faced with the task of overcoming a large garrison that knew the dense urban terrain well and counted some superb fighting units amongst its ranks. The defenders were determined, and the Soviets were in a rush. Stalin wanted to drive for Vienna as quickly as possible, but could not do this with up to 20 divisions tied down by Budapest. In this video, we're going to focus on events east of the River Danube in the Pest half of the city which bore the brunt of Soviet attacks in the first half of the siege. Later, we'll look at the Siege of Buda and the various relief attempts that tried to save the garrison there. The withdrawal of the 8th SS Cavalry Division to Buda on December 24th left the perimeter in Pest very thinly spread, and both the German Army Group South and Budapest Corps Group led by SS General Karl Pfeffer Wildenbruck agreed that Pest should be abandoned and the focus be on defending Buda until relieved or until a breakout could be prepared. Hitler, however, forbade any reduction in the Pest bridgehead. The Germans and Hungarians would hold their ground, though of course the Hungarian command, led notionally by Ivan Hindi, was not remotely consulted. While the Axis discussed retreat, the Red Army wasted little time in pushing into the suburbs of Pest. Their attacking forces consisted of three main army corps, 30th and 18th Soviet Rifle Corps, and the Romanian 7th Corps. Joining these were a bunch of independent divisions and other smaller units. On the map you can see the constituent divisions that make up each primary corps. On December 26th, Soviet and Romanian troops carved out salience in the northeast against the 4th Hussar Regiment, before breaking through against the 12th Reserve Division and capturing Rakosh Kerej II the following day. At the same time, the 18th Rifle Corps took Vexchez, while on December 28th, the 1st and 13th Hungarian Assault Artillery Battalions were wiped out near Pechel, as the Romanian 2nd and 19th Divisions pushed to Kishtarza. In the northeast, Soviet troops held out against five counter-attacks, while two Hungarian battalions recovered some ground up Rakosh Kerej II. This pattern of Soviet advances and rapid Axis counter-attacks of varying success was to continue throughout the siege. Stung by the sharp resistance of their opponents and conscious of the amount of time it could take to clear Budapest, on December 29th the Soviet command decided to try and persuade the garrison to surrender. General Wildenbruck rejected the ultimatum presented to him, and neither of the Soviet envoys sent to the Germans made it back to their own lines. Both died in heavily contested circumstances. The Soviets accused the Germans of murdering them, and the Germans flatly denied it. We'll be getting to the bottom of this in an upcoming video. After the rejection of the ultimatum, the Soviet attacks were renewed in earnest on December 30th. A 1,000 gun bombardment was accompanied by air attacks, and the Red Army's Rifle Corps were now supported by the 39th Guard Tank Brigade. The 12th Reserve Division was forced back, while the 10th Division was by this stage left with only three fighting battalions. Soviet formations won more ground before being counter-attacked by the 13th Panzer Division and forced back to Arpadfold the following day. As the new year dawned, the fighting continued. On January 1st, 1945, the 297th Rifle Division attacked south through the new communal cemetery, while the drive against the 10th and 12th Divisions continued towards Bestruhe. Two days later, the 18th Rifle Corps advanced to within 500 metres of a temporary airstrip at the racecourse, putting it out of action. This left a similar airfield on Sheppel Island as the only landing point for airborne supplies in the city. By January 5th, the Axis troops were mostly pinned back into the city centre. To try and stem the tide, General Wildenbruck sent the remnants of the 271st Volksgrenadier Division across the Danube to Pest, along with General Gerhard Schmidhuber, who was to take command of Axis troops on the east side of the river. In practical terms, there was little Schmidhuber could do. German HQs had poor intelligence and poor lines of communication to their troops, and the situation in any given engagement could change quickly. 
In the early phase of the battle, one of the main sources of information for Hungarian units was to simply ring up houses behind enemy lines and ask the residents about Soviet troop movements. Once the phone stopped working in mid-January though, even this was lost. On January 7th, Soviet advances put the airfield on Chepel Island out of action, leading to futile counter-attacks on the racecourse in the east to reopen the airbase there. The shortage of Axis troops was by now so acute that these could only be mounted by pulling a German battalion out of the front line and just hoping the Soviets wouldn't notice that it was gone. Overall, Axis troops in Pest by now had just 3,600 combat troops, about the same as a single Soviet division. In the south, the suburb of Kishpest was secured for the Red Army on January 8th, with Soviet troops pushing northwest to enter People's Park later the same day. By this time, a salient in the northeast extended from Bestuhe to Zuglo, indicating that the Soviets were trying to split the Pest bridgehead in two. The Feldhenhala Panzergrenadier Division counterattacked from the north, reaching as far as Tobor Street before being forced back. In response, on January 9th, the Soviets launched two fresh major offensives. The Romanian 7th Army Corps captured the race course and pushed west across Hungaria Boulevard. Meanwhile, the Soviet 30th Army Corps attacked in full force towards Rakosrendezo Station. Realising that the Axis troops still holding Repes to the north could be cut off, General Schmidhuber ordered them to evacuate. The Feldhenhala fell back, but it struggled to stabilise its lines, and the Soviets secured Rakosrendezo Station and pushed west into Angelfold and south into the city park. An intense, night-long struggle developed over the park as the attacking Soviet and Romanian troops were initially thrown out by a company of Budapest's police. The 13th Panzer Division went on the offensive, reaching as far as the Merakai Street before two of its tanks were blown up and a Soviet counter-counter-attack pushed them back to the south. There, another assault company arrived and launched a counter-counter-counter-attack which recovered about half of the park for the time being. The battle for the city park, which would last another three days after this, was typical of dozens of engagements raging all over the city. In the south of the steadily shrinking perimeter, the Soviets had advanced to Ferencvaros Station and People's Park where heavy fighting broke out. After dawn on January 11th, the 25th Guard Rifle Division broke through in Angelfold, while the Karapechi Cemetery was taken by the Soviets after close quarters fighting. 13th Panzer counterattacked, was repelled, and forced back to Fiume Street. On January 13th, the Hungarian 10th Division fell back to Kaleti Station from Stefania Street to avoid encirclement, while to the south of People's Park, Ferencvaros train station was encircled and then captured by the Soviets, destroying the first mechanized rifle regiment that defended it. With the Red Army now just a couple of kilometers from the Danube, on the evening of January 13th, General Wildenbrook signaled Army Group South. The Battle of Budapest has reached its climax. The loss of the eastern bridgehead must be expected as from 15 January. Day and night now, the Soviet Air Force bombed and strafed the parts of Pest still in Axis hands, as ground troops pushed relentlessly forward. Over the next 24 hours, most German and Hungarian troops fell back to the Great Boulevard, the last proper line of defence before the Danube. This line was promptly breached in both north and south on the same day prompting the destruction of the Ferenc Josef Bridge and cutting off part of the 13th Panzer Division in the process. On Rakotsi Road, the Soviets forced civilians to march ahead of their columns and ordered them to call on the Hungarian defenders to surrender. Overnight, the last defenders here were pulled back to the Great Boulevard while the Horthy Miklos Bridge was blown up by the Germans as Soviet troops approached its eastern side. The next 48 hours saw the final intense assaults by the Soviets, beating in the last stable lines that the Germans and Hungarians could possibly hold. As victory in Pest approached, Marshal Rodion Malinovsky ordered the Romanian 7th Corps to redeploy out of the city. Supposedly this was because they were needed in northern Hungary, but the real reason was that he did not want to share the glory of victory with the Romanians. This was after the 7th Corps had taken over 23,000 casualties, fully 60% of its strength, in the campaigns across Hungary since October. Its commander, General Nikolai Sova, obeyed his orders but rather too reluctantly for Malinovsky's liking. He was dismissed from his command on February 7th for insubordination, and after the communist takeover in Romania was sent to Siberia for 10 years. At 7.25pm on January 17th, with the Axis lines pressed right up against the river, 
General Wildenbruck was finally given permission to evacuate the pest bridgehead, and huge crowds gathered at the eastern edge of the Elizabeth and Chain bridges. Thousands scrambled their way across, soldiers mixed up with civilians amidst gunfire, shelling and bombing from the air, all in the pitch dark. Hundreds if not thousands were killed in the melee before the two bridges were blown up shortly before dawn on January 18th. Shortly afterwards, Soviet troops reached the Danube. Pest had fallen. But across the river, German and Hungarian troops were still standing firm amongst the hills of Buda, and it's there that we'll be going next.